When it comes to men's style, a common phrase that you will hear is quality over quantity. It's better to have fewer but better things. But what does that mean exactly? Sometimes it's easy to tell. For example, you might touch a t-shirt from a general discount store and you can feel how cheap it is versus something that's more high-end and luxe from a reputable menswear brand. But what about other things where it's not so obvious? I always tell subscribers to invest in quality pieces with classic styling, especially when it comes to more expensive stuff like your shoes, your coats, your suits, and your bags. That way you can buy it once, you can have it for years, maybe even decades, and you will enjoy the experience every single time you use it. A perfect example of this is leather goods. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what to look for in a quality leather bag. That way, the next time you are ready to invest in one, you will know exactly what is worth your money and what is not. Before we get started, I have to remind you that in general, you will get what you pay for. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to go out and spend thousands of dollars to get a quality leather briefcase. In fact, you can get one for way, way less as long as you know what to look out for. I partnered with our friends at Le David for this video and I could not have asked for a better example of quality leather goods. I'll be using my Le David leather briefcase to illustrate all my points in this video. Make sure to check out the article as well. I'm gonna link to it up here and probably in the description box below. There are a bunch of photos on there and I go into more detail for each of these points that I'm gonna outline for you here in this video. Okay, so we're gonna focus on four key things here. One is the leather quality, two, the craftsmanship, three, the hardware, and four, finally, the details. So let's start with number one, the leather itself. It basically boils down to this. You want full grain leather. You do not want genuine leather. Full grain leather has not been corrected in any way. You can see all the natural markings and unique characteristics to the hide. It's the highest quality and most expensive part of the hide, yet it is also the most durable and longest lasting type of leather that you can buy. On the other end of the spectrum, if you ever see a bag or a belt stamped with genuine leather on it, I want you to take that item, put it down slowly, turn, and speed walk vigorously in the other direction. Genuine leather is often made from the least durable part of the hide. It's the cheapest leather that you can get. The ironic part is the name, right? Like quote unquote genuine leather. It sounds so legit and high end, but it's actually the opposite. So if you're looking for a high quality and long lasting leather briefcase, you wanna make sure that you stay away from genuine leather. Lady Vita actually made this bag from full grain leather, but they took it a step further and developed their own full grain leather called Nixberg in partnership with a leading tannery in Germany. What I love about this leather is that it's it holds the bag structure very well. At the same time, it's still very soft and supple. It's also very lightweight and waterproof, basically everything that you need in a leather briefcase that you're gonna carry with you every single day. So just remember, leather quality is of utmost importance. You want full grain leather and you want to stay away from genuine leather. All right, so number two, craftsmanship. What you wanna ask yourself is, where was this leather bag made? And by extension, how was it made? As we all know, many of the things that we buy, including leather bags, are made in China. Now, nothing wrong with that necessarily. Of course, there are some good factories in China, but I think it's more the exception than the norm. When brands are proud of how their product is made and where it's made, they will tell you. They'll probably post all about it on their about page of their website. And if they don't, and you're looking for a high quality bag, well, it's your responsibility to figure out where exactly it comes from. Now, you might be wondering, why does the factory's location affect how a product is made? When products are made abroad in places like China, we don't always know their production standards. Sometimes you can't even be sure that the factory you assigned to make your product is actually making it. Sometimes they outsource your job to a different factory, which is crazy. By the way, I know this happens because my wife Kate worked in fashion for many years, both as a designer and a product developer. And when she was working with factories in China, this is the kind of shit that she had to deal with. When brands produce their goods locally, yes, it can be more expensive, but the upside is they have so much more control over the process and the final product. They can physically visit the factory much more easily and make sure that nothing is overlooked. So for example, Andy, Le David's founder, can travel a short distance from his home to Rayada Accessories in Montreal where all the bags are being made. Rayada Accessories, by the way, is one of the last few luxury bag manufacturers still making stuff here in North America. So he can walk in and give direct input right there on the spot to the actual leather workers that are making the bags. Can you imagine trying to do that if your factory is in China and you're based here in North America? That's near impossible, unless of course you're living in China. So why does caring about craftsmanship matter for you, the person who is shopping for a quality leather bag? Well, craftsmanship 
it matters because it ensures that the briefcase that you're buying was ethically made by the actual factory that was meant to make it. That they paid a high level of attention to its overall quality as well as every design and production detail. Basically, nothing was overlooked, which is what you deserve when you are spending a lot of money and you expect something of quality in return. Okay, number three, the hardware. Have you ever bought a bag and you use it a few times and then the zipper just breaks? Or the clasp on the strap just bends and snaps off? That's the worst. If a leather bag looks like a good deal at a low price, there's a good chance that one, the leather quality is subpar, and two, they cheaped out on the hardware. So first off, the zippers. The most affordable leather bags use the cheapest possible no-name zippers that they can find, which after a few months will break and render your leather bag useless. The most common zippers are from a Japanese manufacturing company called YKK. I guarantee if you take a look at some of your jackets or your bags right now, you will probably see YKK stamped on the zippers themselves. Their zippers work fine. They're a good mid-range option, and for the price that the manufacturer is paying, they are of good value. Riri zippers, on the other hand, are top of the line. They're like the Ferrari of zippers. Riri zippers are made in Switzerland, and they have a really solid build. The teeth are more substantial, the zippers themselves are highly polished, and just using the zipper mechanism, it's just, it's like butter. It's so smooth when you're opening and closing the bag. Just to give you an idea, Riri's can cost up to 10 times more for the bag manufacturer. So if YKK costs, let's say 30 cents to buy and sew into the bag, a Riri zipper can cost a few dollars per bag. When a brand is producing tens, hundreds, or even thousands of bags, a few dollars added cost will really add up. All this to say, using Riri zippers is a deliberate choice for bag designers. Le David included. But you as the purchaser of the bag can rest assured that you have the best zipper on the market sewn into your bag and there's a very, very slim chance that it will ever break. The rings and the clasps that attach the strap to the bag are also very important. Cheaper bags use plastic rings and clasps, which are ugly, they're no good, they're gonna break in no time. Mid-range bags may use metal attachments, but most likely they will rust or bend or snap off because they're not of the best quality. The best briefcases use high-end hardware to ensure that the strap is not suddenly rendered useless. For example, Le David uses this high-end Italian manufactured hardware that is made from a zinc alloy, so it's never gonna bend or break or snap off. Bonus points for the swivel on these clasps. You can never attach it to the bag the wrong way and it'll never be twisted. Finally, number four, the details. Brands that produce high quality leather briefcases don't skimp on the details, even if those details are largely unseen. Of course, I haven't seen every single high-end briefcase in the world, but based on my experience with the Le David briefcase, I'm gonna point out a few of the details that I noticed here. The choice of zippers and hardware, which I already mentioned, are a good example of of paying attention to the details. You already know that these zippers are Riri, so the zipping and unzipping of this bag is buttery smooth and amazing. The rings that the strap attaches to are securely sewn into the bag, and they're also oriented kitty corner from each other, so what that means is basically one on each side on opposite ends of the bag. This helps with weight balance, keeps the bag from getting twisted, and also won't slip off your shoulder as easily. The bag's main compartment is much wider. It zips down almost all the way on both sides, so it does open wide so it's easier to find your stuff, but it's not gonna flop all the way open. The lining is this amazing burgundy colored twill, which feels really high end and nice. Typically I see bags that are either unlined or they use this really cheap nylon lining, which tends to get all shredded within a few months. This twill lining is definitely much more durable and much more pleasant to look at. There is a long leather key ring attachment on the inside, which ensures that you'll never lose your keys. And the actual button enclosure for the padded laptop sleeve is covered in leather, which is a nice little luxurious touch. There's a durable luggage strap that's attached to the back of the bag, which means you can slip it over the handle of your roller and you can run through the airport and not worry about your bag falling off or you losing it. And of course, inside there are a bunch of pockets and zip compartments to make sure that everything that you need is organized and within reach. So these are some of the things I noticed with Le David's briefcase and I love that they were very thoughtful with the design and attention to detail and I feel like if you're going for a high quality leather briefcase that you should find something very similar. That's it fellas, I hope this video helps you uh, the next time you are out shopping for a quality leather briefcase or a leather bag in general. Remember the four things that we went over, okay? Leather quality, craftsmanship, hardware, and the details. You wanna make sure that all four of those things are covered whenever you are shopping for a high quality leather briefcase or leather bag. 
and now you know exactly what to look for and what to avoid. Big thanks to Le David for partnering with me on this video and allowing me to share what I feel separates a quality leather bag from the rest. Be sure to check out Le David's bags, they are amazing. This briefcase has actually already become my go-to everyday bag that I grab before I head out the door. So I will leave a link in the description box below. So go ahead, scroll down and click and make sure you check them out. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And if you loved it, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. That's gonna let you know when I come out with new videos. All right, I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.